And welcome back to our second lesson in our Chapter 5, Relations and Functions. We're looking at properties of our functions. Now remember back, we were yesterday we were looking at expressing our relationships four different ways. Words, ordered pair, table, and an arrow diagram. Now we want to look at these functions in a little more detailed. We want to start picking up some terms that we can use. First one is our domain. So the domain is the first set of a relation. The range is our second set. So if I was to give you an ordered pair, I could ask you for the domain of this ordered pair. Or I could ask you for the range. The first number or the second number. So here we have an example of the distance a taxi drives and the cost for the ride. So we've got 10k, 20k, 25, and 30, and we've got 15, 25, 30, and 35 dollars in set two. So the domain is the first set. If you remember from yesterday, we said the first set always goes in the first column. So this will be set one. Set one is always my domain. So my domain is 10, 20, 25, and 30k. From yesterday, set 2 is always in the second column. Set 2 is my range. So my range is $15, $25, $30, and $35. So in this case, I've got actual set numbers. We call these discrete values. So if I've got set numbers or discrete values, I've got actual numbers for my domain and my range. If I had a range of values, I'd express domain and range a little bit different. But that'll come in future lessons. So right now, the domain of this uh, relation is 10, 20, 25, and 30 kilometers. The range is 15, 25, 30, and 35 dollars. So once we have the domain and the range, we want to get the idea of a function. A function is a relation. The relation is a function if each element in the domain is associated with only one element of the range. So what does that mean? Domain is my first set. Every element of set 1 applies to only one element of set 2. So 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers goes to $15. Does a 10 kilometer ride cost anything else but $15? No. It doesn't cost 25, it doesn't cost 30, it doesn't cost 35. In fact, every element of my domain goes to a single element in my range. So in this case, yes, I've got a function. One to one means a function. Let's look at a second example. Red and apple, yellow pear, red strawberry, blue blueberry. So let's think back here a little bit. What? How can we explain this in words? We could simply call it as fruit color. The apple is red, the pear is yellow, strawberry is red, and blueberry is blue. What's the domain? Well, domain would be red, yellow, red, blue. And our range would be apple, pear, strawberry, blueberry. So is this a function? Well, no, it's not. You can see that red is associated with apple. And red is also associated with strawberry. So we do not have a function in this case. The yellow going to the pear and the blue to the blueberry, well, that's fine for a function. But the idea of red going to two parts of the range, that's no good. Now, we want to take this to the next level where we are actually graphing these relations. When we graph, we've got two axes. Traditionally, we'll go with a vertical 
and a horizontal. These axes have two names. Well, we start off with the X and the Y. So if we're looking at a quick graph, which is the X, which is the Y? Well, this here turns into my Y axis. This is my red. The way I remember this is a capital Y has a tail sticking straight down, which goes on the axis that is going straight down. We can also call these the dependent and independent variables. So we can see that my x is my independent variable, my independent axes, and my y is my dependent variable, or my dependent axes. We also can call them the domain and the range. I would list all my domains across the x-axis, and I would have all my range go on the y-axis. So for our little example here, what is my x-axis? What's my independent variable? What's my domain? Well, it's red, yellow, red, blue. So otherwise known as the color. What is my y-axis? What's my dependent variable? What is my range? Well, it's apple, pear, strawberry, blueberry, otherwise known as my fruit. So I can now take an ordered pair. I can now take a table. I can now take words. I can now take an arrow diagram and plot the values on an, a graph. Knowing where your axes are is rather important. So let's take a look at changing our relations into function notation. So if we have a relation, then we can have a formula. So let's look at one really simple. David earns $12 per hour. Well, this is words. We've got David here, he's got a job, and the relationship between the amount he works and the amount he earns, or how much he gets paid, is expressed as $12 per hour using our words. Here we have our ordered pair. If I work one dollar or one hour, I get twelve dollars. And that kind of makes sense. Twelve dollars per hour, one hour, twelve dollars. Well, what happens if we work for two hours? If we work for two hours, we're making twenty-four dollars. Jump ahead to six hours, we'll make seventy-two. And ten hours would actually make a hundred and twenty dollars. So basically all we're doing is taking the number of hours we're working and multiplying it by twelve. So we can make this into a formula. Our basic formula here is y equals kx. Now if you think back to our axes, our y axes, our y variable was our dependent variable, is also our range values. So if I go to a formula here, the y is going to be the range. and the x is then going to be the domain. So I flip back up to our notes here. The domain is always our color, which happens to be our first of our ordered pair. The range is always my fruit, which is always my second of the ordered pair. So if I go back to my actual question, the 1, the 2, the 6, and the 10, that's all my domain. So what is the 1, the 2, the 6, and the 10 representing? Well, in our example here, it's representing our hours. 
The range is the second number error ordered pair, 12, 24, 72, 120. And what does that represent? That represents our pay. So we're going to change our y and our x, which we know them to be our variables. We know them to be the domain and the range. We're going to change them into letters that match our situation. David earns $12 per hour. So the y is our pay, and our x is our hours. The k is going to be the number associated with that relationship. And we know right from our words that it is $12. So our pay equals 12 times number of hours we worked. We brought that from our ordered pair, giving us the domain, giving us the range, our y and our x. And we got that from our words, which is the $12 per hour. It's our relation. Pay is related by $12 for every hour we work. Now, if this relation is a function, we can, res we can represent it in function notation. So we started with our formula. Pay equals 12h. So now to make this into function notation, what we do is we take our y variable, we write it down like normal, just the p, and then we make a little subscript. So I open up a little bracket, and we write it a little bit below the line where the p should be written. And the subscript is going to be our domain. It's going to be our x variable, which in this case is h. Close the bracket, and we write the remaining of our formula. So our y variable, subscript with an x variable, and the rest of the formula. What we say here is we can say p of h is equal to 12h. So p of h, subscript, p of h equals 12h. So how can we actually use this now? Find the pay for six hours work. So six is our hours. This is our x variable. So I can say p, and now my h, I know a set amount of hours. I know I'm looking for six hours. So p of six, the pay for six hours equals 12 times 6. P of 6 is equal to 72. So what we say here is the pay for 6 hours is 72 dollars. The pay for my hours of six is $72. So let's try another example, kind of working from a different perspective. Here's my formula. S equals 8K minus 4. So let's write this in function notation. Well, we start the same way. S, open up some brackets put down the x variable, which is in this case k, s of k, equals 8k minus 4. So I just simply take the formula, rewrite it, with a subscript of my other variable. Well, what's my domain? Well, we've been talking about how domains are set numbers. From my formula here, I don't have any set numbers. My domain, I know, is my x variable. My x variable is this one right here. So my domain is k. And whatever values I choose for k will be my domain. My range is right here. It's s. So the range will be whatever values I choose to 
represent s. At this point, in a formula, I don't have numbers. If I wanted to take this to the next level, where I had to make a graph, I would then choose values for the k, which would then give me values for my s. And I can make a table, and then I can make a graph. But that will come in future lessons. Right now, you want to go to your textbook and work on page 270. You can do two A's, six B's, and one C.